from a research of a cotton ons factory in China in 2016. There have 16 of its factory workers weren't paid the minimum wage. 28% weren't paid enough overtime. 23% were paid in correct entitlements and 20% didn't get their entitled day off each week. Even workers would be paid at least the living wage, a minimum of wage a month. The cost? Just 50 cents extra for a t-shirt. When capitalism organizes society to make people work to produce commodities, then sell them to make huge profits, and then use these profits to reproduce the system and expand the workload. The value of commodity is depends on the necessary social labor type. It includes the direct labor in the commodity, the labor embodied in the machinery and raw materials used, and the value transferred to the commodity. The value of commodities can be measured by average amount of labor time required to produce them. Both money and price are expressions of value. Although the price of commodities in market operations does not always equal their value. Well, I bet you do. Now tell me, who on earth will not fall in love with Uniqlo's winter wear, H&M blouse, and brand solid buy 3 for RM50 shirts? Yeah. However, just so you know, behind these fast fashion company successes in winning the heart of their customers, there are actually hidden secrets. Indonesian worker Warni Lina, campaigning outside Uniqlo store in 2018, in an effort to force the company to recognize her plight, and that of her 2,000 or so fellow workers who were made redundant, when the factory shut in 2015. They say they are owed about US$5.5 million in unpaid wages and severance payments and want Uniqlo to be held responsible. According to Warney, the normal working hours were from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m., but they often had to work overtime, sometimes until 10 p.m. If they worked overtime, they could only get 8,000 rupiah which is US dollar 50 cents in extra payment, regardless of the number of additional hours they had worked, the situation is aligned with Marx's theory of exploitation. Theory of exploitation explained that workers in a capitalist society are exploited, insofar as they are, forced to sell their labor power to capitalists for less than the full value of the commodities they produce with their labor. This happens because they are forced by their lack of ownership of the means of production to sell their labor power to capitalists or else starve. It means that they have no choice but to work and be exploited or else they won't get any money to survive. The price or wage of labor power is determined by its cost of production specifically, by the quantity of socially necessary labor required to produce it. In other words, Marx thought that workers under capitalism will, therefore be paid just enough to cover the bare necessities of living. Means that they capitalists, in turn, don't need to produce anything themselves, but are able to live, instead off the productive energies of workers and the surplus value becomes the source of capitalist profit. So, it is clear that a labor can be exploited by being paid an unfair wage. In Karl Marx's economic theory, capital accumulation is the operation whereby the profits are reinvested into the economy, increasing the total quantity of capital. Capital was understood by Marx to be expanding value, in other terms, as a sum of capital, usually expressed in money, that is transformed through human labor into a large value and extract as profit. Example like Forever 21 had opening new store almost every six months. By 2001, Forever 21 had 
122 stores and by 4 years later, the store increasing more about 370 stores. They start to open their market in international countries like they entered China in 2012, Brazil in 2014, and by 2015, they had 255 stores location outside the U.S. Here, capital is defined essentially as economy or commercial asset value that is used by capitalists to obtain additional value. Like how Marxist analysis say, capital accumulation will identify with the process that arrives with expansions of the productive force. Forever 21 retailers were making clothes faster and clothing production globally that increasing from 2000 to 2014. The number of garment produced annually topped 100 billion for the first time in 2014. Karl Marx's class struggle elaborates on how the concentration of wealth by the ruling class will eventually lead to antagonism between them and the class that they exploit. Historically, as society progressed and productivity increased, laborers started producing a surplus of goods which translated to profit. However, this profit was owned and controlled by capitalists while their laborers earned meagre wages. Relating it back to fast fashion, the garment industry is one of the most exploitive industries. The workers work long hours in horrible conditions with little or no pay. Big Western fashion brands hegemonize cheap labor from poorer countries while selling their clothes at a profit. We see like for example Zara. Whilst their workers earn RM14 an hour and work 16 hours a day, in the Texas, Amancio Ortega, the founder and CEO, is considered one of the richest men in the world. Examples of these class struggles include slaves and slave owners, feudal lords and peasants, and presently, the proletariat who are the working class, and the bourgeoisie who are the capitalists and own the means of production. So Marx stated the history is a matter of struggling classes aligned with either forces or relations of production. The bourgeoisie are comfortable with the status quo, living lavishly. The proletariat, however, want change. They want the fruits of their labor realized and to gain benefit from the surplus that they produce. This leads to conflict between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. Eventually, it will lead to a class war and a revolution.